What's going on everybody? I'm doing a really cool video with you today because I am gonna be doing something with the Rivian, the all electric truck, and I will be towing that thing over there, which is a camper, an all electric camper, which is even cooler, 2,000 pounds, and I'm gonna be driving it roughly 1,000 miles from Denver, Colorado to McCall, Idaho for an event. I'm speaking at the event, but I wanted to test out the Camp Works trailer what the towing capabilities the Rivian can do. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I am really nervous about doing this. Nobody knows that until right now. <laughs> I obviously know how the Rivian performs without anything, you know, towing behind it. I don't know how it performs with something being towed. I don't know what the efficiency rating is. I have no idea how long it's gonna take me. I don't know how many stops I'm gonna have to make. I don't know if I can get to the next station. I already know that I can't even go through Wyoming, which is the quicker route, I ha because Wyoming doesn't have charging stations frequent enough for me to, 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 to make that work. So, so there's a lot of things that I'm a little nervous about. I think that this video is gonna be really cool because I'm learning a bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm going through the motions just like everybody you're gonna see in this video. This is going to be the realest of real and that is what I do on my channel. I do as close to real content as possible. Let's go hook up this uh, Campworks trailer, an all electric trailer that will have the capabilities of charging the Rivian, which you'll see in a completely separate video, which is going to be an all electric camping video. As soon as you hook everything up on the Rivian, and other people have talked about it in their videos, the percentage goes way down, or the mileage goes way down, so automatically it drops to the pretty much half. So it'll go to half the amount of what I can actually go. So right now it says 139, and as soon as it feels the weight of the trailer, it should adjust, and let's hope it does, and we're gonna find out, so. Okay, so I'm very much new into the driving of this at like only a couple minutes on the road. And already the mileage has gone up from 139 to 155 range. So that'll keep on increasing as, you know, it, it identifies what the weight is on the, on the tow. I've already set in my first coordinates to the first Electrify America station on Interstate 70. My biggest concern is charging properly at these stations because I might have to detach the, the towing when I get there. These stations are not very equipped to have the... Oh, as I was on with you guys, I stopped at a red light and that, that stopped quite nicely. I have trailer brake accessible through the steering wheel and that braked beautifully does not really feel that I'm towing actually anything at all. The 2,000 pounds is not a lot for this. It pulls it like a dream, honestly. It's not, it's really not that bad to tow with the Rivian. Obviously your efficiency goes down. All right, just like my last video, um, charging at Electrify America is just easier to do it that way. They're a lot more frequent on major freeways. Got the Campworks trailer, got the Rivian, got the charging going. We're juicing at 170 kilowatt per hour. So I was pseudo lucky that the charging station that I am at uh, is at in the back corner of the parking lot. So I was kind of able to angle and be able to also get out when I need to get out. If this spot was taken, I would have had to go to one of these spots and I'd probably have to detach the trailer and then charge up, which isn't a big deal. I can obviously do that if needed. So it's gonna take a lot longer towing a, uh, you know, a camper because you're probably gonna to wanna to go closer to that 100% mark. Uh, if I wasn't towing like I did in my last video on the last day of driving, I only went to about 80 to 85% uh, and then I would just go on to the next station. It's a lot easier and faster to go up to 80% than it would to go from all the way up to 100. 
Hello, van lifers. What up? downfall to towing is you obviously have to stop more frequently the mile range ha has been going all over the place i saw as high as 180 and i start like if i go all the way to 100 percent, it'll automatically start at like 150 which 150 mile range is 50 percent of the original mile range on all purpose mode in the rivian r1t I'm between Breckenridge and Grand, Grand Junction, Colorado. Now I was gonna try and make it to Grand Junction and I only have like 90 miles to get there. But my range, when I originally got into my truck, said that I wouldn't be able to make it there because it, it was exceeding the limit. But when I rolled into this location, it only, it didn't drop as much as it said it was gonna drop, the mile range. So when I rolled in here, it said I had 114 miles to empty, but Grand Junction was like 90. So I didn't want to take that chance. And the reason I didn't want to take that chance is because I'm driving through the Colorado Rockies and there's a lot of going up. And when you're going up, it uses more power. Yes, you're gaining a lot going back down, but, and that's probably what really helped me from Breckenridge to here was there was a lot of downgrade. So I'm coming out of the Rocky Mountains right now. The good news to all of this is I've got some killer views all around me. Other than the charging stations themselves, they're kind of like me. But like, look at the mountains and everything. And then there's mountains behind, back up there. Like it's, 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 it's gorgeous here. Now I now signed up through Electrify America. Why I didn't do it during my entire trip from Boston to Denver is beyond me, but I'm saving myself a, like a lot of money because I, I signed up for the four dollar a month, you know, membership because I figure I'm going to use these quite often, especially the next couple of weeks. You can change that membership at any time. Four dollars a month gets me like instead of it being like forty three cents per minute, I I believe I'm doing it now for thirty one cents per minute. Like there was something wrong with the stations. It was weird. And they were like, oh, we're not accepting card payments because the card reader wasn't working. You have to be a member. So I just signed up real quick. And then the, the actual machine itself was frozen. So I didn't know this either. There's a helpline. There's numbers that you can just call for customer service. But I got a hold of somebody within like, I don't know, six or seven minutes on hold. Uh, they actually reset the machine. These things are just large computers, right? So they just like reset it. They rebooted it. And then now bada bing, bada boom, I got myself a nice little charge going on. I'm in Utah. There's actually a sign, look at that right there, boom. Utah, boom. Didn't get as far as I wanted today. That's what you get when towing with an electric vehicle. It is what it is. Progress actually isn't as bad as I thought it was, but we're gonna get some shut eye. I'm gonna sleep in here right now. I'm taking up two spaces, but there's plenty of spaces. I'm not really taking anything away from anybody. I'm at a rest area. That's what these places are used for, so it's pretty nice. Am I kind of a D-bag for parking the way that I did? I'll back up so everybody can see a little bit more. Yeah, I am. But it's 6.30 in the morning. I'm really hoping that nobody else is in this area it's gonna wake up this early to charge their EV. From a camping standpoint, most EVs, I know the Rivian does, has adapters that you can plug in to, you know, a 220 or a 110 volt. Now that's a slower charge, but if these campsites switched over a couple sites to have EV charging, that would be really rad because you could not only charge your trailer, but you could also charge your EV. Now, like I said, camp works, among maybe some others, I know there are probably some others out there, but CampWorks has the capability of charging the Rivian or other EVs with their, with their production models. And maybe I'm the guinea pig, and that's fine with me. I'm cool with being the tester. I need some coffee.
side note, I found this a little interesting. I was talking to a gentleman at one of the uh, charging stations this morning, and uh, he had a Volkswagen EV, whatever that is, whatever the model is. But he said he also owns a Tesla, and he said when you're at Tesla stations, and maybe anybody that's watching this that is a Tesla owner maybe can attest to this, but he said that none of the Tesla owners will get out and chit chat or hang out or talk to people about whatever. But he said when he drives his Volkswagen and he's at, you know, any other charging station, whether it's EVgo or Electrify America or ChargePoint, he said people are always so nice, they always talk, we always have a friendly conversation. What's up with that Tesla owners? I'm not, I'm not talking smack, but yeah. For all you towing enthusiasts out there, I will say that this thing tows like a dream. As I've already said 47 times in this video, I'm towing about 2,000 pounds and the capabilities of the R1T can tow up to 11,000 pounds. So the real test will be when I tow my tiny house when it's built. Right now, I can't even feel that I'm towing. It's crazy. And I'm on windy roads right now going through the Utah mountains and I'm going 60 miles an hour. Doesn't even feel like I'm towing anything at all. It is an absolute dream in regards to the towing. Efficiency, that's a different story that I'm gonna save for later in the video, but efficiency wise, um, uh, how you wanna do camping and things like that, you may have to do a little bit of extra planning. Possible, of course it's possible. Worth it, that one's up to you. It's all a matter of preference when it comes to stuff like that, you know, but if you were towing a boat to a boat ramp, super easy to do. At worst, you'd get 150 miles. At worst, 150 miles. So that's not all that bad. What I'm seeing here from the towing, it's the the range inconsistency is, is, uh, is a lot. They don't really know the exact range that you're gonna get. 150 miles doesn't actually mean 150 miles. I went up to 95% on the battery. It said I had 148 miles or whatever it was. I've gone almost to my next destination. I'm about 30 miles out. It was 107 miles away and I have 109 miles left until empty. The mileage it isn't very accurate. What I would actually love to see Rivian do, maybe on one of their over-the-air updates, is if you could somehow know the weight of what you're towing, and then you could adjust that into the towing like section when you select towing, and you could say, okay, choose the weight, and then it'll tell you the range due to that weight that you have on there. Cause like 2,000 pounds, you're gonna get a lot more range out of it than the 10,000 pounds. And then I'd go a little high. So let's say you have a dry weight camper of 2,000 pounds, maybe you say 3,000, and then that'll give you an understanding of your range a little bit better. I don't know if Rivian's gonna watch this video, but I would love to see that, that sort of over there update maybe in the future. I think that would be a cool idea. I don't know, is that too hard? Maybe I'm just being optimistic here. I have no idea. The R1T is an absolute beast when it comes to towing, plain and simple. This one was close. 41 miles left, 27%, but we got there.
I was exhausted last night. I had some really long stretches actually in Idaho that I just was not, not that I wasn't prepared for, but I was definitely pushing the limits of the mileage range with towing the trailer. You know, the range was so fluctuary. I don't know if that's a word. Fluctuated so much, I didn't know like how close I was gonna be to the end. Now, you never know with headwind or, you know, uphill climbing or anything that could really, like my, my AC was running because it was, you know, 95 to 100 degrees outside. So all of those things are a factor when it comes to, you know, range. Everything was all good. I made it to the Boise area, which was my goal. I gave the car a car wash because I need to get all the bugs off because I'm doing an event. This whole reason why I did this. But this last leg is gonna be interesting because I'm going from the Boise area up to where the event is. I didn't plan any of this out. I will end the video by saying, if you were to tow a teardrop or a trailer, whether it's a with an EV, with a Rivian, R1T, I highly suggest plan out every, as much detail as you can. Now, obviously you have to allow for change to happen. You need to make sure that, you know, you can improvise in the moment if something does you know, go wrong. So this last leg is, it's a two hour ride, but it's up mountains. It's only 102 miles. Obviously like I've gone 102 miles this trip several times. I usually have been filling up between 100 and 120 miles has been my, my charge up. When I'm not pulling the trailer, it's 100 miles more than that. So I had to probably stop twice as many times as I would without pulling. When regards to pulling a camper, whether it's a teardrop or an Airstream or anything else, you really have to consider maybe staying low. It would be really hard for me to take a thousand mile road trip again. I could, but I have to plan out for it. Not only is it a thousand miles to get there, I gotta get back. So I gotta do all of this on my way back yet again. So you gotta think about that as well. Like, I don't know if I would do it again. I, like. I think this is perfect for people that live in the Colorado area and want to go out camping for the weekend. Just by the numbers, I'm going to give you guys some some numbers that I that I went through. Now, also keep in mind that I did sign up through for Electrify America like right at the beginning of this trip. First station, I was a non-member and then the rest were all membership fees, I think. At least they seem to reflect that um, because the first one was $42.08. From there, I never even broke the 40 mark. I barely broke the 30 mark. I stopped a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I stopped 10 times in a thousand miles. So that's on average 100 miles per charge. Uh, one of those stations was free charge point, And for some reason it just didn't charge me. I'm not going to complain about that. Like I probably could have stretched a couple of these, maybe could have only stopped eight times instead of 10. This is a thousand miles, 15 hours of driving. So I spent $220 and 45 cents. Trade off is you got to have time spending more time driving an EV. I also just want to say lastly here that, uh, before I end the video, I drove 3000 miles to go to an event for two days. I wanted to do that because that's what I love to do. I hope that you enjoyed this and you can like and subscribe to the videos. And yeah, guys, I'll see you guys next time. Later.